What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got another underused match. I am using the same team as I have been in the previous videos. So this one's against Gage, and her team is looking pretty scary. The first thing I notice is that she does have Blastoise and Arcanine, so I've got to work against that same core that gave me trouble in the last um, time I used this team. She's also working with some stuff like the Metagross and the Alolan Ninetales, which could cause some problems with Aurora Veil. But anyway, let's go ahead and just hop into the battle and see how it plays out. Alright, so from looking at the team preview, I was expecting her to want to lead off with Donphan, so I decided to throw out Serena here, bring out the Thicky, and she actually ends up leading off with her Cafagrigus. So, this is actually a pretty shitty matchup for me, I don't want to catch a Will-O-Wisp early, and I'm just going to go ahead and U-turn on out of here. So, my best option is to probably just go into Clefable, I don't really care about being, you know, burned and stuff. I catch that mummy, which doesn't really matter, but uh... Yeah, so I go ahead and switch on out of here, and I'm going to bring out Chewed Gum, because I figure I expect the Will-O-Wisp to come, and this thing can't really hurt me a whole lot. So, he actually ends up going for the knockoff, which is kind of unfortunate. I do lose my leftovers early on, and uh, that could be kind of annoying, but at least uh, it could have been worse. So, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just go for a Thunder Wave, actually expecting a switch into whatever she wants to bring against uh, Clefable. I was actually expecting Metagross, as she does bring out the uh, shiny Xbox-looking motherfucker here. And uh, a Thunder Wave is going to land on that thing, which is really nice because that's going to make this a lot easier to take care of not being all fast and stuff. And I might catch some, some you know, lucky, lucky paras. So, here I decide that I don't really want to take a Meteor Mash to the face, so I decide to switch directly into my Dawn Fan here, as she actually ends up going for the Zen Headbutt, which isn't too big of a deal. Rollington can kind of eat that up, and then I can scare this thing away with either, like, Knock Off or Earthquake. So, I've got a couple options here. I actually just decide to go for the Stealth Rock, kind of expecting her to switch out here. But she ends up staying in, at least I do get my rocks up, that's going to be very useful against the Arcanine and stuff like that. So, she actually ends up going for the Ice Punch, it is going to knock me down to about half, which really is not too big of a deal after leftovers, I'm looking pretty solid. I did get those rocks up, and uh, I do kind of got to worry about the Rapid Spin from the Blastoise, as she's actually just going to switch right into the Coffin Dude again as I go for a knockoff on this turn. So that's actually perfect, get a little bit of super effective damage there, and it knocks it down into a very manageable range. So... I actually catch the mummy ability, doesn't really matter, Sturdy was deactivated anyway, but uh, yeah, this thing is just spreading its mummy around like a damn disease. But yeah, so I'm over here eating some leftovers, I'm above half, and Donphan is looking still useful against the Arcanine. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out here, predicting the Will-O-Wisp, I decide to make a pretty risky play, and I go into my Mixtape. Mixed Infernape is going to not be affected by the Will-O-Wisp, so I do get the prediction there correct. And she doesn't really have anything that wants to switch into me, so she has to decide to sack off the Cathagrigus, and an Overheat is going to take that thing out. So, that's a pretty big wall out of the way, and uh, that makes me happy. So, now she's going to be able to freely switch into Blastoise, so that's kind of scary, but I decide to, rather than switching into Clefable this time, um, I'm expecting the Rapid Spin, so I'm going to actually switch into my Thicky here, and uh, she actually makes a really nice play and goes for the Ice Beam after the Mega Evolution. I'm going to go ahead and bust out the cannons as per usual. Honestly, Mega Blastoise is so difficult to take care of. I never really used this thing. Honestly, I might have to toss that on a team, but anyway, the nice Ice Beam happens, and luckily since Serena's so damn thick, I am able to live that with 8 HP, which is amazing, and this allows me to predict a switch into Arcanine, and rather than going for the Trop Kick, I just go for the U-Turn. So, Yellow-Ass Arcanine comes out here, Clifford the Big Yellow Dog is uh, not going to intimidate me, that's something to note, um, I, that tells me that it does have Flash Fire, so I've got to be kind of careful with Infernape's Overheat, but I do get the nice U-Turn there, that allows me to bring in Rollington, and this is a solid matchup for me, considering this thing can't really hurt me, and I have a pretty strong Earthquake against it. So, I'm actually just going to stay in, just going to go straight for the Earthquake, as she actually just goes for the Flare Blitz, potentially expecting me to uh, double switch or something like that after expecting her to switch, but I just stay in, go for the Earthquake, and after the Recoil, the Earthquake is going to be enough to take out the Arcanine. So, that is a big problem out of the way, and uh, I don't have to worry about freaking Arcanine anymore, which does cause this team quite a lot of trouble, so that is pretty sweet. So, on the revenge switch in, she's actually going to decide to bring in the Alolan Ninetales, which I haven't seen in a long time, but all I know about these dudes is that they like to come in, set up the hail, and then go for the Aurora Veil, which is basically like a light screen for both of your defenses. So, physical and special defense is going to get a boost, so... Um, rather than expecting this thing to just go for the attack, I'm just going to stay in and go for an Earthquake to get as much damage as possible. As she busts out the old Aurora Veil, it's going to make this thing pretty bulky, but any damage is nice against this thing. So the Earthquake, it does a little bit of a chunk, and uh, you know, it's not too bad. Getting, getting hit by a little bit of hail over here, overall, 
not that big of a deal. And obviously, I'm expecting just the uh, the freeze dry or something to come here. So I'm just gonna go for the ice shard just to get a little bit of uh, last amount of damage. Don fan's not looking too useful anymore, so I figure I might as well just sack this thing off. I'll be able to bring in whatever the hell I want after anyway. So Don fan goes down, but looking uh, like you did a good job, buddy. So. Now I decide to bring in Meaty Claws, I figure I'm probably going to be able to scare this thing away with Bullet Punch. So I actually go for the U-turn, as this thing actually ends up going for the Encore, expecting me to go for the Swords Dance, which was could have been a nice play, because I was really thinking about going for the Swords Dance there. Um, the Encore almost caught me off guard, but unfortunately this has to force me to bring in um, something else, as I bring in Infernape, and it wasn't until after this matchup that I checked that this thing, this Ninetales, actually outspeeds me by like one point. So that is quite unfortunate, and a Moonblast is going to take me out. I was hoping that it wasn't a plus speed nature, but it turned out to be, so that kind of sucks. But Infernip goes down, and uh, the good news about that is, I guess, is that allows me to bring right back in Scizor. And this time, I'm not playing any games. I'm just going to go straight for the Bullet Punch. I guess the other good news about Infernape, that whole Infernape fiasco, was that it, it kind of wasted another turn on the Aurora Veil, which is pretty nice. So that thing's away, and uh, now she's going to bring in the Dawn Fan, who we have not seen yet. But I don't really have anything to do to this guy, so I'm actually just going to stay and go for the Swords Dance. I figure this thing's best option against me is to go for the, um, the Earthquake, and I'm actually pretty bulky, so I can take that. But she actually just goes for the Rapid Spin, which is perfect for me, because I got a nice little free plus two there. And uh, two bug bites at this uh, amount of a attack is going to be able to take this thing out. So it is going to left over pretty much back to full. And here I basically just have to go for a bug bite. Two of them should do the trick. So I bite that thing right in the old trunk as uh, she just goes for the earthquake. It actually does a pretty solid amount of damage. It's looking like this thing has uh, some attack investment. So it does more than half. I had a little bit of leftovers. Meaty claws is not looking too meaty right now. As uh, I'm just going to go for one more bug bite, which will be able to uh, take care of the Dawn fan. Honestly, not too worried about the Dawn fan. I do still have my um, Starmie on the team, so it wasn't, honestly, this thing wasn't too big of a threat. But taking it out with Bug Bite is still nice, as uh, down goes the Dawn fan, and she now has two Pokemon left. I believe it's the Metagross and the Blastoise. So I've got to figure out a plan for those two. Meaty Claws is at about half health, so I'm looking pretty decent as Blastoise comes in here, and since I'm actually just bulky, max HP, max attack, I'm not able to outspeed this thing, and a Water Pulse is unfortunately going to take me out. So, big Meaty Claws goes down, sorry Mr. Krabs, but uh, yeah, so this does allow me to bring in my Serena, who isn't going to be able to take this thing out with Trop Kick, but it will do a decent chunk of damage and make this Blastoise a lot easier to take care of, as uh, it is going to lower its attack, doesn't really matter as a Dark Pulse will take out my uh, Serena, but that's all I really needed to do is just knock that Blastoise down into killable range. This will allow me to go into Chewed Gum, who can take um, a couple attacks from Blastoise since I'm so specially defensive, as she's actually just going to make a nice play and switch right into the Metagross here. So this thing is still paralyzed, it's at full health, it's looking pretty badass and shiny, side note, but uh, Moonblast is not really going to do a whole lot of damage, as I don't really want to take any physical attacks, I do need Clefable for that Blastoise. So I have to switch out here, and I'm just going to switch into Starmie. Rick will be able to take a couple attacks from this Metagross and then hit pretty hard with Scald. I don't have any special attack investment, so it's not going to hit uh, too hard, but it will be um, just a couple of hits to be able to take out this Metagross. So knock it down to about half. Meteor Mash comes. I um, I guess that was probably just his be her best option, um, trying to get like the stat boost or something like that. But Rick eats that shit up because I'm a bulky Starmie, and uh, I'm just going to stay in here, go for some more hot water, kind of just boiling some shit up on this Metagross as uh, she does get the Foley Parrot there. So... The Thunder Wave from Clef Clefable actually came in quite clutch as uh, Starmie. I guess it doesn't really matter. As long as I have Clefable for the Blastoise, I should be alright. So, a last little ditch effort to get some chip damage there as the Bullet Punch comes. And one more Scald will be able to take care of the Metagross. At this point, all I have left is Clefable and Starmie, and she just has Blastoise. But, I do know that... Uh, Starmie does go down to a Dark Pulse from the Blastoise, so it's kind of going to be up to Clefable here. So out comes the Blastoise. My best option is to just go for the Psy Shock, get as much damage as possible, hope for a crit or something, but it doesn't happen. It actually leaves it with like 1 HP, which is amazing, as a uh, Dark Pulse is going to take care of Starmie. So it all comes down to this. All I've got left is my Clefable, bring out the Chewed Gum, and I shouldn't have too much of a problem here, seeing as I have like almost full health. So she goes for the Water Pulse, check this shit out. It does a decent chunk and then gets the confusion, which is worst case scenario, and I hit myself in confusion, which is like, holy shit, that could not have gone any better for her. But 
She goes for one more Water Pulse, and since this thing is so damn specially defensive, check that out. I'm able to live it with 21 HP, and I break through the confusion here to land one more Moon Blast, which will take care of the Blastoise. So, that was very intense at the end. As I was sitting there, I was like, please don't confuse me, and it happened. I haven't seen a confusion from a Water Pulse in like 25 fortnights, but that was pretty fucking crazy. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button on this video if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe for some more Wi-Fi battles, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.